We'd like to thank the good people at Aura. Aura Aura.com. Do you know your personal info is out there for anyone to find? Data brokers scrape public tax records and sell that information legally, making it accessible to anyone. For a limited time, Aura is offering our listeners a 14-day trial plus a check of your data to see if your personal information has been leaked online all for free when you visit Aura.com slash Papa. That's Aura.com slash Papa to sign up for a 14-day trial and start protecting you and your loved ones today. Certain terms apply. We'd also like to thank the good people at Helix. Is there anything worse than going to a mattress store and rolling around on a mattress while some guy looks at you trying to figure out how he can upsell you on every aspect of your sleep experience? It's nothing worse. That's why you should order a Helix mattress online. Online and receive easy delivery. I did this myself. Helix is offering up to 20% off of all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. So go to helixsleep.com slash papa to get up to 20% off your mattress and two free pillows. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey! I was told I'd have bread. You better have it here. Well, I'm in from L.A., and I, I couldn't bring the bread. No excuse. I'm out of here. Well, it, this is going to be the beginning of a friendship, so I will get you bread. <laughs> okay. I did bring you uh, croissants ah. from Vesuvio. You don't Ooh, have to eat delicious. them now. Mm. You can bring them home. You can live your life the way you want to live. Thank you so uh, much. But I love them, and their croissants Ooh. are... I've never had them, but I've heard they're about so them. so good. Down on uh, Spring Mostly Street. Mostly butter. Mostly butter. In them. Mostly butter. So it makes them great. So good. I was having... Uh, croissant at the hotel with my wife and she asked for butter to put on the butter croissant. I would do that too. So good. Yeah. And did she? She did. I was like, yeah, it's, it's all butter. Well, you don't need more butter. She's Especially like, I need more melted. butter. Yeah. <laughs> no such thing as too much butter. Uh, you worked in a diner when you were young. Yeah, one of my best jobs. <sighs> Amazing. Fort Lee Diner. Loved it. Fort Lee. Yeah. So I'm a Jersey kid. You are. Where in yeah. Jersey? Uh, Bergen County up in uh, Woodcliffe Lake. Oh, that's you. Park Ridge. Come on. You were in the expensive area. <laughs> Woodcliffe Lake was. Park it's Ridge was. in New Jersey. The expensive and the not expensive. Yeah. Yeah. We moved from the not expensive to the slightly more expensive. Mm-hmm. But we were the we were the uh, people who uh, weren't rich living in the more expensive. Oh, that can make you feel poor, actually. It did make you feel poor, but it also gave you a little pride. Why? About what? You were just like, you know, I bought my own car. Oh, you know sure. what I mean. I think you meant pride about my dad's poor, my mom's poor. I'm ashamed. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> they worked hard, they were successful, but, yeah. uh, but no, just like with all the other kids getting everything yeah. for free. Yeah, everyone would go to camp. Yeah, and then I would just swim in the pool. The older kids. Sure, it's more normal. Yeah, more normal livelihood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you had a lot more brothers and sisters than I did. Yeah. Pretty much the same. You know, we all worked at our house. I thank God we worked. I think it, that's as good as getting yourself a car, buying yourself a car, to be able to have your own money and have it in your hand and buy what you want. Now, how did you learn that? Uh, my mother and father, we all worked from the time we were 11, all 10 of us. Right. And we were expected to have a job. Yeah. But we learned it, I guess, because they role modeled hard work so much. When your parents do that, you feel like you're supposed to work hard. What did they do? Uh, my dad was a printing press foreman in the day, and at night he watched so he's washed those brown trucks, UPS or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah. My mother was a housewife. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, that's all she did. That's Just all she minded did. the house and ten kids. With that's ten all. Kids. Nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Lazy like, woman. What's it like growing up with ten kids? Being it's better ten. than having the ten kids, that's yeah. for sure. But uh, it's a lot of it for me, for my personality. It was a lot of fun. It was crowded. It was yeah. always chaotic. Uh-huh. You didn't know what was happening next. You didn't have enough space, so you got along with people. You didn't argue because the fights were too obvious. Right. So you really like grew up in a little town of your own, and <laughs> yeah. so we we were really prepared for going out to life. I mean, it didn't seem when I went out to the real world, it didn't seem much difference than uh, being in the house. Really? Where were you in the second oldest and the smartest? Uh, 
<laughs> it's really true. You were the smartest. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was a dumb kid myself. Uh, my brother John and my brother Eddie were all terrible students. Right. Couldn't learn to read or write. However, the three of us, I think, have the best personality because we use it on mouths. <laughs> you know? You compensate. Irish? Yeah, very much. You think anybody but an Irish would have 10 kids? <laughs> I know. <laughs> and a year and a half apart, Catholic, and using the Pope's rhythm method to the day. <laughs> very successful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I loved when we would get around the Irish kids uh, in my town. The Irish kids, they always had people from the clergy coming over to... For dinner. For dinner. Yeah. And it was like when I'd be in church... And you hear these guys, and they're just kind of like doing the sermons. It was like you're trying to stay awake. You wouldn't want them for dinner, right? Then you get to dinner, and they're drinking and having this fun. They're the funniest people you yeah, ever met. They really are. They were great guys. We had one. We had two priests that ran our church. One was very conservative. My mother never invited him over. He was boring. Yeah. She invited the younger priest. He was always with us for our Sunday dinner. But he always brought his knitting. And I even remember as a little kid, Father Gutero is knitting all the time. He's knitting, knitting. <laughs> and finally, when I was about 12, I said, I think he's gay. <laughs> Don't you say that about our priest. He was gay. He yeah, left. He did He became leave. a gay man, came out of the closet. Yeah, he's <laughs> big, knitting. Big guy, but great knitter. <laughs> That's so funny. Who was the funniest in the family? Uh, my brother John. Yeah. Yeah, because he was most outrageous and didn't care what he had to say. And was always saying the wrong things, doing the wrong things, and near getting arrested. Well, actually, he did get arrested. My father put him in jail because the moonshine, the local police station where my father's brother was the captain of the police, and uh, he crashed his truck backwards into the window of the police station. <laughs> Moon them and pulled out and didn't think he'd get caught while he was caught. <laughs> he mooned. Yeah. He and his so wife. He crashed into the police. Yeah. And then, and then his his apology was to moon them and then take off. And take off. He thought that was the funniest thing. But he had more antics than you could imagine. Yeah. Yeah, he kept us all laughing. Oh, those are the best. Yeah. Those are the best. Those are the those best things. people in life. In the end, you remember who kept you laughing. Don't you feel? Oh, yeah. You were such affection. Yeah. hundred percent. It's such a treasure to have someone add joy to your life. You know, yeah. it's silly. It's just plain out silliness. Yeah, to not yeah. take it that seriously is yeah. so important. To be irreverent. Boy, was he irreverent. Yeah, the irreverent part is. He would, every Sunday as a grown man, drive down. You don't know Edgewater, New Jersey, or do you? It's Edgewater, a yeah. long distance away from where you grew up, he would drive down the river road, which was the main artery in the whole town. It was right. two miles long. And he would be butt naked on a Harley Davidson, stone drunk. And everybody in the town along the way would call the police and say, John's at it again. And the police would come, make him pull over his bike, and he would get in the front seat. They'd always say the same thing. The cops tell me this. They'd say to him, John, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but they took him home, put him to bed, and, and brought his bike home. So everybody loved him. Oh, my God. Now, yeah. did he work? Oh, he was a roofer. He was a roofer. And he had a great routine, if I might share it with you. Mm -hmm. He said he used to hang a lot of fancy roofs, and the fancy guys, especially in the finance field, always gave him a hard time. Because when he came down to get the second half of his check, the guys would say, oh, I'm not sure. You know, that's a lot of money for what you did and blah, blah. And he said, oh, you don't think it's worth it? No problem at all. And he said to his two men who worked with him, hey, go up and take off the roof. <laughs> he said, people ran for their checkbook so fast. <laughs> So everything you did was was like watching your own TV show. Really. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have to say, I was saying this to my wife uh, this morning when I was coming to see you, was there's a lot of things that have accumulated through, uh, through time now on Instagram and self-help and all these ways of conducting yourself in business and the way that you work and so all much. this kind of stuff. It's, it's such, so much of it. Mm -hmm. But you... We're not reading that stuff when you were. I wasn't a good reader. It wasn't. You know, you're, yeah. It wasn't available. Aside, yeah. It was. But there, you were. Where, how did you find the answers in a world where the answers weren't in your phone, in your palm? Well, how did we all find the answers? The people who did the best, I believe, without any answers or anyone to look forward to to give them the guidance acted themselves. I think when you act yourself, people recognize it's a real deal, the genuineness of it, and they accept whatever style you're putting forth, whatever 
you're putting whatever you're saying. They just accept it on face value because you're very much on face value. So I think all these theories are very helpful to a lot of people. They're formulas that they could mimic, formulas that they could get confident confident in themselves about. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also think if you're just true to yourself, things work out for you. People yeah. like it, you know? It's weird how everybody else has a sense of when you're honest. Oh, yeah. Don't you think you can't fool anybody? No. Yeah. No. I'm not honest. I don't know what you're thinking. Yeah. But I just want you to know I'm not honest. No, I got, I'm, I'm, I got that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got that 100%. Okay. <laughs> no, but it is true, like, especially when, if a politician comes oh. along and all of a sudden starts speaking truthfully. Yes. Everybody leans in. Of course. Like kind of like breaking the... Breaking and it might the be bullshit, too, but... From what you could see, you lean in because you think it's genuine. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Clinton had that gift. Yeah. As did Obama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Giuliani in the early days. In the early days, he was great before he lost yeah. his marbles, right? Yeah, before, he, before this, this other crazy. version showed up. <laughs> God, who was that guy? I don't know. It's such a strange thing to be. Isn't it? When you tell people, because if you were here during New York, in yeah. New York during that time. Great leader at that time. Great leader. And then you try and tell that to people that didn't grow up here. And they're like, wait, that guy with the stuff coming down? That, yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> you can't yeah. Be. But he was great. Yeah. He was the right man at the right time. He really was. Yeah, he was. He was. So when you were growing up, did you, what was your idea of the city at the time when you were? We never went to the city. I had a boyfriend who met me at the Fort Lee Diner who ultimately gave me $1,000. Uh, didn't give it to me, loaned me a thousand dollars that I never paid him back <laughs> to start my business. But um, what was I saying? What were you asking? Ramon I was, Simone. Yeah, Ramon Simone. But you asked something before. Uh, the when you were a kid, because when you grew up in New Jersey, there's this thing across the river. Oh yeah, called this, the city. This, Thank this, you. Yeah, this. Wizard you got me of Oz. back on track. Yeah, this yeah. Wizard of Oz. We never thing. went to the city. We weren't allowed to go to the city. So right. I went there first when I was 24. Real. And it was magical. And it didn't take me yeah, long. First time. I loved it. First time ever. And I fell in love with it right away. Yeah. Well, when you're a kid, you tend to fall in love with the excitement of the city. And I was one of those kids. Yeah. I yeah. know. The minute you get in, it was just. I knew I would never go back to New Jersey ever, ever again, which I have. But I wouldn't go back for a good 10 years, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so. I could see the um, Empire State Building from my desk, like way in the distance through. The now or then? When I was a kid. Wow. Yeah. How could that from New Jersey? Yeah, from Wilcliffe Lake. You wow. Can see it across, like in the distance, just peeking out. Wow. You can see it. Can't imagine that. Just sitting there and think, I should boy, I should be there. This well, stop bragging because I saw from my bedroom, which fronted on the Hudson River, the entire city. You'd think I'd be curious to go there or ask my parents, why don't we ever go there? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not we even. saw it all spread out, but you never want to go there. It was for other people. You know, the city was different. Yeah, it was yeah. a whole different thing. Yeah. So who cooked in a house full of 10? My mom. Your mom. Three square meals a day and had a habit of setting the table for the next meal. So you never went into the house where the table was and said. Really? And yeah. everyone would eat together? Always. You, you were commanded to eat at 6 o'clock sharp. Really? Yeah. Everybody. I got the best seat. I was to my mother's right. Like I was on the bench on that corner. Uh-huh. And my mother was here, and what was great about it is I was right next to the refrigerator, so I threw away all my peas and vegetables I didn't want behind the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother John sat next to me, and he said, I was never left-handed. I just pretended I was left-handed since I was a little kid, so Dad stopped hitting me because he was sitting next to my father on the other end. <laughs> father would whack him like this. <laughs> yeah. John seems like a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, I wish he was still here. A lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Did he have a job? Did he ever get hold down a job? <laughs> oh, he he ran his own business. He was Did a local really? roofer. Yeah, he was very successful. Yeah, he yeah. pulled it off. He en endeared people to him, no yeah. matter where he went. You know. Yeah, yeah, the wit. Yeah, the, the wit thing. is wonderful. Were your parents that way? Uh, my mother was very quick witted. Yeah. Uh, my father, somewhat, not so much. A little bit more of a serious man. Yeah. Yeah, but everybody at that table, every meal, competed with comedy. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Just to get attention. That's the only way you would get attention from anybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So there's a lot of back and forth. But that's also an Irish trait, I think. The jabbing, the sarcasm can be very mean at times. I've learned not to use it with other adult people later in my life. Because <laughs> some people really get offended. But I like to explain, no, that means I like you. If yeah. I'm insulting you, I like you, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. Exactly. It's it a means, little different. Yeah. That is kind of the thing that's going on now culturally is that you 
that ribbing of each other is yeah. it's a celebration. It's yes. It's why we're all together. Like, why human beings? Yeah, right? you yeah. ignore each other, but yeah. Oh, it's so cruel to ignore somebody. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's very interesting. Uh, so you didn't go until 24. Mm. So tell me about the Fort Lee Diner. I was very curious about that. Well, I had one counter. I was in charge. There were eight eight little seats there. And then Gloria, who was, she was a competitor. She had the other counter, and she got most of the business. Because Gloria, I'm not exaggerating. If I said she was a dead ringer for Dolly Parton, she was, really. She even the beehive bonnet hair and everything. <laughs> yeah. But she had two giant breasts, and she carried two coffee cups in each hand. Two more double stacked on her breast. Well, I'm not making this shit up. Yeah. <laughs> Bang her way through the doors and the guys are. <laughs> so she was my competitor, which I did not like because she had many more tips than I did. I could, I recognize that. <laughs> but I tied ribbons on my pigtails. My mother's advice, she said, stay how you are. Just, I was complaining to her one night. She said, stay how you are. Put ribbons on your pigtails and just be as sweet as you are. She said, because men like the great white virgin as much as they do the bombshell. I didn't really understand it then. But she was right. And that's right. the night Ramon Simone walked into the diner. Yeah, tell me about Ramon Simone. I've heard you oh, talk about Oh, yeah. This. What a story. What a story. He was good looking in my book. One look at him, I knew I'd lose my virginity right away. He had dark <laughs> olive skin, jet black hair with a lot of grease in it, so it went really straight. He had a tie on, a real shirt on. It was a suit. And I was like, oh, I want to eat the best part. He had... A navy blue aviator shade, so you really couldn't see his eyes. Oh, man. And boy, did he turn me on. <laughs> How old was he? At the uh, time? He was 10 years older than me. 10 years older. He's 34 around there. So he just struts in. Mature <laughs> in man stops. wearing a real suit, wanting to sit at my counter. And he's not interested in getting coffee off of boobs? Not at all. He ignored <laughs> her all the way. He was after me. And he offered me a ride home, and that was the beginning of him being my boyfriend, much to my mother's dismay. Right, she didn't like Ramon. No, he, he looked different slick. than us. He was too old for me. He wasn't Catholic. Right. He, where's he from? Uh, the Basque country, he told me. She said, that's not what we want, Basque country here. I'm like, All right, I don't even know what it is, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, he wasn't for me, according to my mom. Was he Italian? Uh, no, he said he was Basque. Oh, Basque. I which is a Basque. part of Spain. He explained oh, that Basque. to me. I didn't know what it was. Oh. But actually, when I got to know his mother many years later, five years later or so, and was living with his three girls, we went to visit his mother with the three girls, and she told me he was Puerto Rican. He grew up on 145th Street, <laughs> not in Spain. And I thought, what a routine. I didn't mind that at all. I thought, what a good story. Yeah, what a yeah. good character you created. Yeah, because I thought her name was Simone. I called her Mrs. Simone. She said... Don't call me Miss Simone, it's Simon. I said, why is it Simon? This is Simone. She said, that's my second husband. I said, you mean, are you really his mother? Yes. It was just so confusing. And that's how I found out he grew up in Harlem. Wow, he yeah. just made up a story for himself. But he made up a life for himself. Yeah. And he was, for me, at that very young, impressionable age, going to be impressed with anyone who was semi-accomplished and mature. Mm -hmm. What he represented to me is that you could be who you want. Right. So I didn't hold it against him in any way when I found out certain things were uh, a little exaggerated about yeah. everything. Because I thought, good for him. He's getting the whole world to fall for and he's making himself who he wants. And he became very, uh, I wouldn't say wealthy, but he became very comfortable building one family houses. And it was because he really had the gift of gab to raise funds, to get along with people, to talk talk someone into buying the house and adding more things to the house. He was he was great. So it was a great role model for me. So what are you thinking at that age when you when you meet him? Like do you have a dream at that point? Do you, are you thinking of where you want to go or you're just going No I just trying to I had one goal. I didn't want to get pregnant. Right. Everybody in my high school at that time, just about everybody was married within three months after high school. And they had babies within a year, year and a half. And I oh. I remember sitting in my house and going, that's not for me. I didn't know what was for me, but I figured that's not for me. I don't want to stay in Edgewater my whole life and have children. And I don't know why I felt that way, because my mother was a very loving mother and ran a very good household, so you'd think I would have wanted to emulate that. Yeah. But I didn't identify with that. And Ramon presented another life to me in New York City. Yeah, yeah. an escape. Where yeah. did he take you first, do you remember? Barbizon Hotel for Women. It paid for, for a week. 
which was really nice. My mother didn't like that either. She said he he was turning me into a prostitute, which was ridiculous. He wasn't. But he gave me $100, uh -huh. crisp, crisp $100 bill. I still remember the sound when he pa passed it to me. Yeah. And he said, go buy yourself a real New York outfit. That's pretty <laughs> sexy. That is so storybook. Yeah. It well, really... well, I felt like I was in a storybook from yeah. that day forward because I went to Bloomingdale's, which is four blocks south on Lexington, and I bought myself top to bottom a lavender outfit, and I felt like the it girl. Yeah. Know? Oh man. Yeah. So Did you it was feel like comfortable immediately, like when you're walking down the street. I belong in a lavender here. Outfit, like I was singing Georgia Girl. Yeah. Hey there, Georgia. I was the it girl, you know, like Mary Tyler Moore in that day. Watch me, watch me. Immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Probably because some somebody else was paying my bill, and I didn't have to worry about rent for that week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there is something about this town. Yes. Some people never get a handle on it, and some yeah. people know immediately that this. You think is their it's home. that black and white? People don't have to grow into it or anything. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, there's a, mm, there's an instinct. There's like a there's a this is for me person that says this is for me. Yeah, bring it on. Yeah. yeah, but it is a great town. I mean, what I noticed about this town right away, and I've never changed my mind on it. It really is welcoming to the newcomer. Yeah, that's one. And the other thing I really like about it, it didn't. Well, from where I sat anyway, I seem to think that it didn't care who you were, where you're from, what your credentials are. You know, it's just a town yeah. that's practical. Like, what do you, what can you do for me? That's right. what, they, what the town wanted. What could you do? Yeah. You, even yeah. when you went on the job interviews, can you type? Do you know shorthand? Do you know? <laughs> you know, it was just very practical. And yeah. that it was very appealing to me. Nothing esoteric about it. Right. Yeah. And if you were already, as a young kid, working really hard and... Just another job. And you got the... The, the wit and the wherewithal from being in a big family. It's yeah. Like, you're kind of like, it was a it was bigger like town a prep school for this. <laughs> oh yeah. No, it was yeah. a large prep school because I could go into uh, any building I wanted that had an apartment for rent and I could open the door, get the key from the super, the doorman, open the door. Like it's like all of New York belonged to me. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was, man. Just didn't even seem like work. And that's what he did. He was in. No, he was building one family houses in New Jersey when I met him. And he stayed in New Jersey building one family houses. Oh, so how yeah. do, so how did you start how did the building? Yeah. He gave me a thousand dollars as a loan. And he said he would own 51%. I'd own 49%. And that seemed fine to me. And I ran the brokerage business and he continued in his business of building houses. Yeah. But the brokerage business, did you build it from scratch or? Yes. Well, with a thousand dollars, that counts. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. At first, it was just me. But it was under his guidance, was he saying? Well, he always a, gave me guidance. A, Both, basically, I have to tell you, the guidance he gave me was interesting. You can do it. That's about it. That's it. You can do it. You're smart. You can do it. Yeah. Maybe he yeah. just didn't want to do any of the work himself. Right. But I was complimented every time. Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. yeah. So, so it really worked out. So there was no thought in, in your mind of like, I'm going to get into real estate. I'm going to do this. No, kind of you were just like, no, it was I'm Ramon sorry. Simone's idea. Ramon Simone. Yeah. And if he had suggested something else, I probably would have jumped into that. Right. Because my attitude was I had 22 jobs already. I thought, why not? I'll try another one. You know, I'll get yeah. another job. If I don't like it. And I didn't take it seriously. However, what I should have taken seriously, I had never worked for myself. Mm -hmm. The minute I worked for myself, didn't have to report on time. I was always in early. Right. The minute I work for myself, I push myself harder than I ever pushed myself in any job. And so I was meant to work for myself. It was beautiful working right. for myself. Yeah. That was not lost on me. I knew I had found my home. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How quickly did you start having other people work for you? Almost immediately. Yeah. I made my first commission check of $348, and I only had $1,000, so I... Now had thirteen forty eight minus some advertising I was paying for, and then I immediately took my check and went and bought my fellows with the whole check a fancy coat at Bergdorf Goodman's, and it was the best move I could have made because it covered up my clothes that weren't looking very good. Uh -huh. They were still from New Jersey. Nothing against New Jersey, but <laughs> my part of New Jersey that's not a good sign wearing those clothes. But yeah. this gorgeous, really, well, most people would say disgustingly gaudy coat. Uh -huh. Covered my whole body almost down to my ankles with the fake fur and the fake fur and the, <laughs> um, the bone buttons and the wow. But you know what? I was confident in that coat. Yeah. 
I knew when I put that coat on, I was going to be the queen of New York real estate. I knew it as sure as I knew my name. I could see mes- myself in living color, and it started with that coat. I had that coat on. People were adoring me. People were kissing my ring like they kissed the palm pope. I had a lot of people working for me. People were asking my opinion. I saw the whole movie in my head, and I really didn't think that it would come true, not for a second in my whole career. Amazing. Yeah. It's better than a business plan to have a picture, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing because it just happens. It just happens. Not, yeah. Didn't happen for me at the Fort Lee Diner. I'm gonna be an incredible waitress. I wanna yeah. I wanna run a great diner. No, I never had that thought of working for myself, really. Yeah. Yeah. Man, do you think that it's is it was it destiny? Was it I don't know if I, I believe about destiny, but yeah. I no, nah, probably not. I don't think people are destined. I think when I hear the word destiny, I think it's already been decided, Miss. Yeah, you know, so I don't, I don't think I play. thought that way. Yeah. yeah. And what do you attribute it to? Luck? Part luck. What if I hadn't met Ray in the diner that night? Would yeah. some other guy loan me a thousand dollars, or for me to ride home? I don't know. Maybe I yeah. doubt it. Yeah. A lot of lucky things happened to me. Yeah. Tremendous luck. I opened my business first uh, in an apartment with two roommates, which everybody got roommates through the uh what was the name of that old paper the greenwich village paper oh uh, the uh, village voice yeah the village <laughs> list of roommates wanting roommates so i got Shoot. two roommates and i opened my business there so i met my customers on my couch and i would take them out and show them apartments but i got a lucky break uh i had a phony customer call into me once and i sensed she was she was not who she claimed just felt in my bones but i also felt in my bones there's something important about this lady who's pretending to be a customer. Mm-hmm. So I pulled out the dog. Is that the expression? Yeah. I really went fancy on her. I showed her all over New York, explained everything, like the perfect dream agent. Uh-huh. And it turns out she ran the whole relocation department for Merrill Lynch. And from that day forward, she sent me every customer. I just was taking people in like, like cookies. They're coming. But meeting them on my couch, and I'm sorry, I got off course. I want to tell you about the good luck. Yeah. The good luck was I had so many young men from Citibank meeting me all day long on my couch. Right. That's a super. I thought I was a prostitute. And John Campagna, who owned the building, evicted me. And I found the eviction notice. But in meeting John Campagna, trying to convince him I'm not a prostitute, <laughs> always paid my rent. The girls always give me the rent. It's all on time, blah, blah, blah. I told him the story of how I was renting an apartment for a lot of money by one of his competitors. I didn't know it was a competitor, another Italian man. Uh-huh. Talking a mile a minute, right? So now, I'll slow down. No, this is great. Oh, a little, no. a little fast. I didn't even know where I'm going. Yeah, okay. You got it. But when I met John Campagna, he was so handsome, and I convinced him I was a prostitute, and I said, you know, Joe Ciafuni, I'm getting him on his rent, three eighty a month for a one-bedroom. You're only asking for three twenty a month? Because I told Joe Ciafuni if he would build a wall between the living room and the L-shaped, we could position it as a one-bedroom and den. And he put all walls up in his house and gave me the building that I lived in, and he gave me the exclusive on the whole building. Was that a lucky break? If he hadn't Jeez. evicted me, yeah. I wouldn't have gotten my first listing. You know, that was my first exclusive listing. Jeez. So I had a lot of luck along the way. Right. Everywhere I had luck, really. Yeah. Yeah. I do think it plays a big part in life. You also have to work your luck that, like crazy, right? Yeah. But you have to have breaks. You, you know? have to have breaks, of You course. do have to have breaks. Yeah. I guess you'd make it somehow anyway with no breaks, but you have to be discouraged after a time. Yeah. yeah. But it's so interesting that you just kind of, it seems from the story you're telling that mm-hmm. you, you found your place Oh, I did. immediately. Like you had. But, you know, in hindsight, because I work with so many young entrepreneurs Today, Tom, yeah. uh, I really believe I could be an entrepreneur in any business now. I really think this, they're common traits that people succeed in business. Mm-hmm. And if they don't have them, they don't. Right. Well, so right I think, uh, I'll tell you, but before that I want to say, but I think I wound up in real estate because that's where I wound up. But I could have done something in plumbing supply or legal services or uh-huh. something. It's all the same routine, you know, in building a business, kind of the same routine. In answer to your question, what are the common traits? The most important one in my book, most people wouldn't agree with me, is the ability to take a hit. Mm-hmm. It's not just in work, but in life. I mean, if you can't get back up. Yeah. So I really look for people who, who I think will take a hit hard yeah. and get back up. And when they don't, you know, they never make it. Yeah. They might have the big dream. They might work their ass off for a while, but 
in the end, they don't make it. You almost have to be too stupid yeah. to lay low when you get hit. You almost have to be stupid enough to get back up and say, hit me again, you know? Yeah. Not yeah. literally, but I think it's that kind of a attitude toward bumps along the way. Could you, could you when you start building mm-hmm. your company and expanding and hiring more people, could you see that trade in people? Not at first, yeah. until I learned to look for it. Uh-huh. You know, real estate is a, a the hiring of real estate agents is not so easy because agents don't come in as salesmen and say, I have a great record. They come in as housewives whose kids just went back to school. They come in because they didn't succeed at their last job and they're trying something new. Mm-hmm. So there's no track record on sales. So I really made a point of trying to figure out how do you identify talent? Yeah. Not based on the past history because you really don't have much to go on, you know? Yeah. So I would just really listen, really listen hard. And I had a little trick I did. Well, maybe not call it a trick, but it it certainly let me separate people. Uh The thing I would do is I would listen to the person, the interview, and after they had wound down a bit, I'd let them talk a while to get a feeling for the person. And I'd say, would you like me to share with you what the two traits that are essential to real estate age that I found in my office so far? Yes, yes, yes. They always say yes. They never say no, yeah, right? Yeah. Then I say, well, the first trait really is a great deal of empathy. And I could tell you are a genius at empathy. You have to know, read between the lines. When people tell you black, you know they really mean blue, blah, blah, blah. I give them examples. And people would say, that's right. I'm that way. I'm really, I never had a single soul who said I have no empathy. Yeah. <laughs> so I would just lie about that right away. Give yeah. that, just schmooze it up. And then I said, but the other trait, I have to say I'm not getting it from you at all. What trait is that? I said, no drive, no ego, no killer instinct. And then I had two different responses. People would sit there and say, no, I have a killer instinct. I have a drive. You know, I have a drive. I was on the committee at school. I'm like, oh, I'm out of here. The people who you wanted to hire, uh-huh. you could feel the vibe. They wanted to come across before you finished your line. I want to kill you. <laughs> oh, really? I, You're hired. They didn't take it well. They were uh-huh. insulted personally oh, to be told they weren't aggressive. And aggressiveness yeah. in sales yeah. is key. Yeah. Yeah. And then taking the hit is more key, if there's such a word is more key. Right. You know, just like getting yourself back, getting yourself back up. Because it's a business of rejection. It's a mental game more than anything else. Yeah. So Did you, you, you think you had that beyond business, that trait, being able to get back up again? Did I have it? Yeah. That's my specialty. Yeah. I'm at my best if you insult me. Mm-hmm. I mean, God, thank God when I ended the business with Ramon Simone because he married my secretary, and I know that sounds vicious that I had to end it, but I just couldn't stand see him and go kissy-kissy every day. So, so you were romantically involved with Ramon Oh, he was Simone? my boyfriend and my partner for seven years. I was the mother to his th- three children, yeah, for oh, sure. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, we were deeply oh, wow. involved. I can't even say looking back deeply in love as embarrassing as that might sound. I never thought about it. It was just productive. Mm-hmm. You know, worked somehow on a lot of levels. Yeah. So that's the way it was, but I now lost my thought of where I wanted to go. What was I just saying? It was an important thought. Then he went sure. off with uh, oh, the secretary. Oh, yeah. This is know. what I wanted to say to yeah. you. I'm so good at being knocked down, really, because when I discovered that was Ramon Simone said to me, you'll never succeed without me, because he was angry that day. I don't blame him. He should have been angry, because I hit him broadside. You, why was he angry? Because you, I said, we're ending the business the today. No, but that doesn't have to do with business. That's his personal life. Right. I said, we're ending the business today. You're going to pick the first salesperson. I'm going to pick the second. We have 14 salespeople. We'll divide them down the middle. We'll go our separate ways. It happens this morning. Wow. And he said, you'll never succeed without me. And I'll tell you, honest to God, Tom, I knew better than I knew my name that I would rather die than let him not you know, see me crawl or not succeed or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, or stay under. And that's when I realized I was pretty good at insult. Right. And yet if he had, I wonder sometimes if he had said to me, oh, you're incredible. You Look what you've done yourself. You, this isn't all me, honey. You're great at it. I probably wouldn't be a business. Right. It was just to show him that I kept coming back, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Did he? Was he aware of what you were doing once you split? Of uh, what your business was? Pretty much because we were competitors in the same field uh-huh. and then he stayed in business about three years with his new wife as his partner uh-huh. and uh then they went out of business but it was a very tough real estate cycle it was the 1970s of city was going bankrupt yeah people didn't want to live here it was just a rough time to succeed yeah, yeah. what was the apartment scene like then what was it was wild yeah like you know 
What, I, was, the, what was the Upper West Side like? At that? No one wanted to live there. No one wanted to live in the Upper I West Side. I got a listing at the Dakota, an older man, 14 room Dakota, and I they had to take the listing. The price was zero. He was willing to give it away for zero if someone would assume the maintenance, which at that time was 17, seven, I think 1700 a month, which would be like, what would it be now? I don't know what that it equates to. But I'm telling you, you could buy an apartment on Fifth Avenue, say, say what was $100,000, and on Central Park West, just the other side of the park, it was like 22000 Wow. Nobody wanted Central Park West until John Lennon moved in. Boy, that changed everything. Jeez. Yeah. It was a whole different oh, world. Man. It it was a rent controlled town. It was a walk up town. Yeah. You didn't have many doorman buildings. You had no co ops. You had the conversion boom in the eighties where everything that was a rental was converted into a sale overnight. Yeah. I remember reading a New York magazine on the cover was a cartoon. It was a mother bird throwing a baby bird out of a nest and the caption said a sign she was holding sorry going co-op but the whole city was going co-op <laughs> but you know what it did for me as a as a young business owner yeah. it enlarged my market they were producing product for me to sell i didn't know it at the time right but i couldn't even keep up with the city growth i had to run like hell to keep up with it you know Jeez. so that was good timing again luck yeah and i just happened to be in new york at that time yeah you know and were people changing their mindset at what point were people Deciding, no, this that's is a, place a good we place to live. live. Yeah, it was in the uh, when did Donald Trump put up Trump Tower? Around the early '80s, somewhere there. Right. Okay, I remember I was at a real estate conference, a giant conference in San Francisco, one year, and as people usually say, "Well, where do you sell real estate?" And I would always answer the same way: New York City. And up to that point, everybody said to me. People live in New York City. What's it like? Like, they thought I was out of my mind because all they saw was the blood and the crime on TV every yeah. night. And people, like, felt sorry for me. And then about the time that Donald Trump put it up, first it was actually first put up the, the hotel on 42nd Street, mm -hmm. early 80s. I went to the same conference in some of this city, I think Chicago, and I'd say, oh, yeah, I sell in New York City. They go, wow, it must be exciting. Like, what happened? Same person, same job. Yeah. It was like suddenly it became a great place that everybody wanted to be a part of. What? We still because have, of what he did, you think? No, I think or, it was. he was one of many. That, at the, I, he was the first, and it caused media attention because, as you know, he was always good at media. Uh, yeah. But everybody was building new condominiums. So there were no more conversions. Uh, everything was going up new. It just exploded the city. But they couldn't Amazing. keep up with the rate of numbers of people coming here, especially young people. Right. They're coming from all over the all United over. States wanting to make their dream come true, and they're right. Yeah. It's the best city, so open to change. It's the right place to start a business, you know? It's amazing to think that at one point it wasn't. That it. That I think maybe it always was. Yeah. Because change is the middle name here. Mm -hmm. But I, I think collectively people didn't recognize it. When you were running around during that mm -hmm. time and – some of the neighborhoods in the 70s and the blackouts and the crime and the punchline. Mm -hmm. uh, you're single, attractive, making money, running around. Did you So attractive, you, Ramon met Tina and married her. Well, we never <laughs> liked her much anyway. We don't like her. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't funny at all. No, 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 no. But, uh, like, how did you feel walking around the streets of New York at that time? Did, you know, believe in it. Was it a youthful it, thing of, like, you don't even clock what you're living in? Or? No, you know what? For me, it was so dirty and gritty and filled with interest. Like everything was different and interesting and changing. And yeah. even the newspaper guy on 86th Street changed like every fourth month. <laughs> A new shop went in. What? What? I'm the old guy I just made friends with, you know? Yeah. No, I, but I always saw walking around the city like it was a movie set. I mean, yeah. I didn't know about movies and <laughs> such, I never saw them. But I felt like I was a character playing in a cast, yeah. a bunch of people living in the city, and I was so happy to be part of it. You know, yeah, yeah. it was like a drift up. It sucked me up. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, just another. Character. And still, the truth—that's the same experience. If you talk to a young person who's just moved here, yeah. and older people will tell you the city's not the same. It's not blah 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 blah. It's yeah. bullshit. Yeah. The young people have that same starry-eyed like wonderment about the city, I know. and they take it on that. face value. Yeah. yeah, I'm noticing that since the pandemic. Yes, very much.
the older crowd is like a little shaken and a little like oh, it's not it's the so same funny. anymore. And yeah. then you go downtown wherever the young people are hanging out, and it's it's, it's a lift. Popping off. Yes. Yeah. Real estate <laughs> question. Mm -hmm. The one thing I had a meeting this morning in Midtown, and there's not you're not. Oh gosh, been telling some of the story. You're not story. shoulder to shoulder with all the business people swimming upstream and smack in the middle there. of the week. Smack in the middle of the yeah, week. Yeah, you here on Monday, at ten o'clock. Uh, is that going to come back? You think? I don't think so. You don't think so? That's Something will have to be done about the commercial real estate for sure. Yeah, because it's thirty percent of it. Well, not thirty percent. I think the real figure is twenty percent of it's vacant. How do you how do you keep a building up and pay the bank mortgage, pay the expenses? Yeah, twenty percent vacancy, and a lot of your tenants not even paying their rent. I don't know. The yeah. banks are being very friendly to the developers right now. But I wouldn't want to be around when the shit hits the fan because I just don't believe the volume of people are coming back to Midtown They're just or not wherever. Do it. What for? Think about it. People yeah. have been trying so hard to get people back. And the businesses are working. With yeah. People being in their homes in New no, Jersey. And not as not as good as when they're at your office, in my opinion. I don't think so yeah. either. And I don't Different work thing. in an office, but I just being but, around other people. Oh, other big brains, difference. Huge difference. Yeah. I mean, some companies are coming down pretty hard on it. Yeah, they're trying. But, I mean, it's not here. It's no. Just, it's so it's strange. It's like someone pulled the plug out, right? Yeah. I mean, it's better now than it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. But still, it's like someone pulled the plug out, right? Yeah. 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 But you say someone pulled the plug out on that in Midtown, downtown Manhattan, where there's a lot of offices, you know, offices to be gotten. Yeah. But no one's pulled the plug out on restaurants, theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, welcoming new people to the city. Yeah. Uh, high prices for housing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, standalone. Yeah, why, isn't, why isn't housing? Why is housing? Because everybody wants it. Everybody owes. It's just a finite in New York. You have to believe in New York City. I bought properties over time because I was. I felt I had to buy them because I was looking for office space and couldn't find any in rough neighborhoods. So I would buy the building just to get an office. Right. And every one of them became worth a lot of money. A lot right. of money. Happenstance. Uh, but it's always true of the city. You can't not have confidence in the city. It reinvents itself again and again and again. Yeah. Many people don't trust the city, particularly people in real estate. They say it's not the same. It's crazy. I have learned to trust the city. It's yeah. always somebody who wants it. Always. Always. Yeah. I mean, there's no breaks. My daughter's graduating college. And she's uh oh. Coming back in and looking around of like where to live in New York. Get ready to help her with rent. I know. I just learned that this morning. That oh, you'll learn it. <laughs> oh no, you should have not shown up. <laughs> No. What's wrong like, with you, Tom? Didn't like, oh, you know better? Strange. You know what you were going for. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm like, oh, she's graduating college. Well, that's off my bankroll. Well, oh, no. Get ready. Wait till she announces she's going to start a business and can you give her 100000 I know. <laughs> <laughs> Send her to Shark Tank. <laughs> Have you ever searched your name on a search engine? If not, you may be surprised by the amount of personal information available online about you. Your full legal name, email, home address, phone numbers, pictures of you at the prom, all that private stuff. This isn't just true for you, but it's also for your friends and family. We're thrilled to partner with Aura. Aura is an all-in-one online safety solution that helps protect you and your family from identity theft, financial fraud, and online threats. Before they happen, do you know I got hacked? I got uh, I have fraud from uh, somebody. People took over my Facebook account. Oh wow! They let in. They took my password. They took over the account and started posting stuff that was not mine. Thankfully, it wasn't nudie pics. But still, it felt very um, it felt very exploitive. You don't want this to go down. And with all of our stuff out there, and people literally spending their entire waking moments figuring out how to get your stuff. It's an awful experience. It's nice to have protection. For a limited time, Aura is offering our listeners a 14-day trial plus a check of your data to see if your personal information has been leaked online, all for free when you visit Aura.com slash Papa. Check it out. That's Aura.com slash Papa to sign up for a 14-day free trial and start protecting you and your loved ones. That's A-U-R-A, Aura.com slash papa certain terms apply so be sure to check the site for details you spend a lot of time in your bed i know it doesn't mean you're lazy 
It just it means it's one of the places that you love most in the world. Unless you have a bad mattress. And then you just kind of clump, come in and you do it and you end up on the floor and you're unhappy. Well, if you want a good mattress, visit Helix. This is what we did. We took the Helix sleep quiz to let us know exactly what our sleep preferences were, my wife and I. And we had very different desires. We had very different things. I liked it a lot softer. She liked it a lot harder. No jokes intended. Sleep quiz. Take the sleep quiz and find the perfect mattress in under two minutes. And then they personalized this mattress for two separate people in one mattress. Came to our door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out the new mattress than by sleeping on it. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 15, 10 to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. They're great for you. They help you sleep better. I'm telling you, when you get a good mattress, your life is better because you're sleeping better. It's a great thing. American-made, they come with 10 to 15-year warranty, as I said. Don't take my word for it. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress pick by GQ and Wired Magazine. It is even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine. So Helix, right now, is offering not only a great mattress, not only the best sleep of your life, but up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. So go to helixsleep.com slash papa. This is their best offer yet. It won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. I'm telling you, it is very important. You ever go to a bad hotel? Have you ever become a comedian and gone on the road and stayed in a hotel with a bad mattress? Well, thank your lucky stars you're not a comedian because I end up on a lot of bad mattresses and they ruin my day. Go to Helix and get the right mattress. Thank you, Helix, for being a part of the show. Say, not me, honey. <laughs> How did you like your time with Shark Tank? Um, I didn't in the first couple of years. I found it very stressful. You did? Mm, really rough Wasn't on me. was your thing? Constantly had a cold sore on my lip because, <laughs> no, because my nerves, nervousness came out on my lip for some reason. So <laughs> I couldn't smile. It would crack it. It was just terrible. Because I couldn't be heard. You know, uh, I had all men on the set before Lori came. Right. And Lori is a, is a stronger voice than the men, really. And I have kind of a light voice when I'm in a crowd. I don't mean to. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't let me have a word in. Right. Mow right over. I was embarrassed. Cause oh, I could, really? I couldn't get my questions or comments out. It was terrible. Nothing changed. Like, I had a realization. Nothing like that. But yeah. then, uh, maybe five years into it, I thought to myself, i got to pretend I'm a guy. And it helped me. Really? Yeah, it did help me. I'm going to pretend I'm a guy. Yeah. That's, I don't did know. you ever feel that earlier in your career, like when no. you were doing your thing? Like it didn't seem like... I never thought part. of myself as a girl, and I competed in a man's world because everything was owned by the men and yeah. worked by women. Uh, but no, I never thought I, of myself as... A, I thought of myself as a competitor. I never thought of myself as a girl or a woman uh -huh. or anything like that. But on the Shark Tank set, I felt very much like the girl. The girl. That is so strange. That yeah. You go through the yeah. tough world of New York real estate and not have that feeling. Yeah, but so Hollywood. You get to television. Honestly, I think uh, doing anything in the Hollywood kind of world yeah. is harder. Thank God I had found my confidence and built a successful business before I went to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It would have screwed up my brain terribly. Yeah. I mean, you question yourself. You try and improve people yeah. by kissing your butt or or treating you separately like you're famous. Yeah. And and other people are against you. It's just a, a warped out world. So, yeah. But I knew who I was by that point. Right. But thank God I did because yeah. it would have been just a terrible job. But it's turned out to be, I think, my best job ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, to be able to, you know, it's your person. What you built was personality driven. It was yeah. you. And to have more of you and more people know you. Oh, it's not that where I get the satisfaction. Oh, it's not? No, not at all. What is it? What I get my satisfaction is choosing these entrepreneurs that get my investment and working with them. Oh, really? Because I get to do with them uh -huh. what I did as a young entrepreneur myself, opening my eyes in the morning and say, what do we got today? Right. And living in their shoes again and again, the beginning years. And those are the most fun years. Yeah. If you talk to anybody building a business, you can't help but to recollect them and say, remember when? Right. Well, I get that remember when in real real time every day working with right. people. So I think, boy, did I get lucky. You know? How many companies 
Oh, I don't even, I keep track. Probably 120, 130 maybe. Oh, really? But that doesn't mean I work with all those people. Yeah. I work with probably about a third of them. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's a big number, though. Whoever I think really has uh, the ability to really succeed. Yeah. Uh, It seems a little cruel in a way. Like, if I think someone's never going to make it, I don't want to spend my time. Mm -hmm. And maybe I should give them equal time, but I don't want to waste my time. I don't have the time, so I justify myself. Let me work with the winners who's got it. (laughs) Yeah. 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 That's got to be a cool thing when you were kind of analyzing it, just dealing with people, hiring people, learning personality, like, to That's then my have favorite. Them walk out like that. Oh, you mean on the show? That, yeah, to have that experience of how to size mm. up. How much of it it's is the idea harder. and how much of it is the person. It's all the people. For me, it's all the people. Yeah. I don't care about the idea. Sometimes I don't even understand it. <laughs> oh, really? And I bought into good people whose idea was terrible, and I felt it, but I kept it to myself. And then it blew up, and they started something else, and I was their partner. And it was I the know. right idea. Really? So it really is the person. Yeah. It always is the person, you know? Interesting. Like a bob and weave and be... You have to be a salesman, yeah, for sure. I never saw anyone succeed who didn't know how to sell. Right. They might not call it sales. They might call it personality, enthusiasm, mm-hmm. um, persistence. They have all kinds of labels, but what it really is is sales. You get people right. on your side, right. customers on your side. You track people in. You get your employees to come along with you. Uh, you nurture talent. I mean, all that is sales. Yeah. I think it's sales. Is the story true that about how you got your apartment? Oh, the current apartment, my penthouse. Yeah. Of course it's true. Yeah. I love that story. Yeah, my me wife too. really loves that story. I mean, I we're New it. Yorkers and now we're in LA. Yeah. And we're always plotting our return. Uh oh. You're yeah. being priced out while you're <laughs> I while you're away. It's a terrible mistake. You're gonna be running to catch up. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Don't come to me for help. <laughs> come on. I'm not giving you any money. You're gonna be giving your daughter money. <laughs> I don't need money. I just need tips. Tell me oh, what's tips. the next hot neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Where should I go? I just wrote down what I decide. Would you believe it's on my hand? Because I always forget the name. Oh, you don't want to live there. I'm Where? talking about investing. Hmm? Ridgewood and Queens is the hottest place in the world right really? now. Really? Phenomenal. Yeah. What's what like? happened was uh, it's hopping like crazy. The money is going coming into it. The creative community is moving in. Investment bankers are moving in. It was purchased recently, like in the last seven or eight years. It was pay- purchased by the Russians. Russian old old families with not a lot of money put all their money there. Um, Italians and also Balt- the Baltic area, whatever those people are called. Wow. All those houses were built and turned into four-story houses. Boy, is that rocket and rolling. You should go there at night and see what's happening. Really? You think Brooklyn's hot. Yeah. You should try Queens. Is it snobbish to think I, will, I only want to be in Manhattan? Not at all. You're practical. You don't have to go across the goddamn bridge. I love Manhattan. Yeah, you've spent your time in New Jersey. What do you want to go across the bridge for? <laughs> exactly. What for? I, 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 that whole Brooklyn renaissance was lost on me. But you've got to be downtown because you're kind of a hip guy. You would love downtown. You yeah. wouldn't be happy up there. You think I'm hip? Oh, yeah. That's good. With that little bit of hair, this stuff you're pulling off. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. Hope you don't mind. You started off saying I don't need new hair. I meant it. <laughs> but this is an opportunity for a joke. I can take it. Okay. <laughs> no, but that? I love Manhattan. Who is laughing out loud? <laughs> That's your fans. You You're making fans. Okay. It's electric. <laughs> Are you still Catholic? Uh, well, I didn't denounce the faith, so I guess I am. Did you give up anything for Lent? Hell no, I'm not putting that ash on my head. <laughs> that is a weird day. You know, my mother made us go to church Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. We had Saturday off and went to church on Sunday. Whoa. Since I got out of Edgewater, I've never gone to church. I've had I wow. put in my dues. Yeah, I think that's a lifetime of <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I'm going to heaven no matter what. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Every day. Every day. Yeah, they had a seven o'clock mass. Wow. Yeah. Should we get all those kids out of the house? Out of the house. Well, the, the youngest ones. Before you know, school. Before school, yeah. You were out by eight. School started quarter to nine, yeah. Jeez. You are already dressed for school, so you just went over to school. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I man. think in hindsight, it was an attempt to get us out of the house. <laughs> That's all it yeah, was. I know. Get it over with. Let's move out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Um, how old did, you, did your parents live till? My mom died, I guess, when she was 85. That's 10 years older than me now. Right. Uh, and my father died a year after her. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 You know, you're never prepared to lose your parents. No. Whether you like them or you don't. Yeah. I find people have a very hard time. It kind of really makes you an orphan for the first time. I really feel 
you're supposed to feel like, well, finally you're really the adult for the first time. No, mm-hmm. I feel more like a child who's an orphan. Really? It's a different kind of a feeling about it for me. Yeah. Yeah, I want them back. Yeah. Especially my mom. My dad? Ah, huh? My mom, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. What would she cook? She wasn't a good cook. She wasn't? <laughs> But you know what? Think about it. She put three meals on the table. Yeah. Always had the table set. Always a hot meal. Yeah. Every well, unless at school she made it's peanut butter and jelly. We went to school. Right. But she prepared meals every day, so she wasn't a good cook. If she served me one more stuffed pepper, <laughs> like stuffed pepper. Okay. When I used to come home and visit her, she'd make me stuffed pepper. I know you love this stuff. Oh, I love that stuffed pepper. <laughs> No, but she had many other traits that more than made up for her yeah. frozen vegetables and over mashed potatoes, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. fish sticks on Friday night because yeah. it was against the religion to eat meat. That's right. A scam developed by the Pope. But <laughs> um, she had many other qualities that were incredible. She was very well organized. We uh-huh. had a two bedroom flat, 10 kids. Everything was in its place. And I never really? felt confined by neatness, but she just had systems for everything. Everything had a place, everything, and you had to abide by it. You felt like you were living inside of a Swiss clock, actually. Wow. That's yeah. so funny That's because talent. my knee-jerk reaction when you s- describe being with all these children is just chaos. Yeah. It's just it's just yeah. madness and shoes everywhere. And no, not really, because she wow. cracked the whip or snapped her fingers, and you know what your job was. Wow. And the more important trait she had, which I will always... Uh, from I even knew it was wonderful when I was a little kid. Yeah, she had the ability to uh, bring out your best. She would always tell you what your gift was, and each kid had a special gift. So you, she didn't tell you Mary's gift was when Ellen got her anything. Everybody had a special gift. So, really? for example, and she would announce it when we came home from the Holy Name Hospital. When the baby came home with her from the hospital, she'd say, "Meet your like." Oh, like she'd say to me, I remember I was, I guess, eight or nine at the time. She said, meet your brother, Tom. He's going to be an incredible dancer. (laughs) Yeah, really? And that was based on the fact he had really fat legs. He was kicking like hell. (laughs) And would you believe my brother Tom became a ballet dancer for the Alvinelli Dance Theater? But I'm not saying she was like 150% accurate. Whatever she called out for each of us, we became that person. She constantly told us, oh, for me, Interesting. I think she was rubbing the bottle, uh, bottom of the barrel a little bit. She said, <laughs> Barbara Ann, you have a wonderful imagination. You just have a wonderful imagination. And so when I came home from that sister from hell, Sister Stella Marie, who told me I would always be stupid, which really oh, God. was so terrifying for a young child to hear. How old were you? Uh, third grade. Jeez. Beginning of third grade. You'll always be a stupid. She even had hair on her chin, which I have now, so I don't know why I would criticize her. But she she said that in a way that I believed her. But when I came home crying and told my mother, she said, don't even worry about it. You have wonderful imagination. You don't have to learn to rewrite. You could just fill in the blanks with your imagination. Jeez. And you know what? Even though many people would say that's not maybe the best parenting, but she had no time to teach me, really. Yeah. You can't hire a tutor in our house, right? So, um... But God bless her soul, she made me believe it. And it's I went amazing. out feeling strong about it, you know, really strong about it. Yeah. And she did that with every child. Yes. And she was close to being right with me uh, because if she had tried to pin on an occupation with a wonderful imagination, all the bullshit in the world, she always said, you're such a bullshit. And she was right. Um, <laughs> she should have said, you're going to be a real estate broker. <laughs> but right. she never called it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did she see you become a success? Yes, of course. She did. Yeah. But in her mind, uh, every one of her children, I'm not trying to schmooze it over, but it was really her success. Right. Proud. And all the the kids in my family financially did very well. Most of them started their own business. And uh, so she didn't really have any kids that were dysfunctional. Yeah. Were turned out problematic. And if she kept my brother John out of jail, she could do anything. Because he almost went to, well, he did one time go... But he was he should have been in jail much younger, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing that he was ended up with a business after mooning the cops. <laughs> Maybe it's mooning people from the roof. I never saw it. <laughs> Maybe it continued. How important are other people in your story? So the, important. The people. I mean, because it seems like you had some pretty impactful Well, my mother was incredibly impactful by role modeling. 
And because she believed in me, and she even went so far as to say, you're a genius. You're a genius. Don't pay attention. You're a genius. I'm like, I am? Well, what does a genius feel like to do? You know? <laughs> so I didn't quite know, but yeah. the idea that she had that confidence, that was the most important person. Me, yeah. My father was important uh, because he taught us about insubordination. He would get fired from his job, his printing press foreman job, probably every third, fourth month, <laughs> and come home. And this was important to my mother. She had to feed her kids. Yeah. And he would come home. We'd all gather around the table. He'd say, guess what, kids? We all knew. You were fired? He goes, yeah. I told Mrs. Stein to take that job and shove it up with her. Moon don't shine. Yay, Dad. He was like our John Wayne at our table, you know? Amazing. So, But um, he hated working for people. I'm sure there was nothing wrong with the yeah. parade of men he worked for. But he never liked them when they told him what to do. Right. And so he was insubordinate, would get fired. Right. I'm sure he wanted it that way. But he interviewed well. He always got so, another job within two or three months. He was working again. We were eating well again. Right. Uh, so my father Jersey. was in, in New Jersey, Jersey in Edgewater. Yeah. But my father was impactful, not like my mother was for mm -hmm. me. And then Ray Simone was impactful. Even Tina taking the secretary, taking Ray alone away was impactful. Because with not for that, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have started the Corcoran Group. I wouldn't have started again. Right. So there's a reason for everything. All right, so we, we can like yeah. her a little bit. Yeah, and then you know who's been most impactful in my life, honestly, even beyond my mother? The team of people I've ever, always had around me, whoever they were, whether it be Corcoran Group, my media people now, whatever. Mm -hmm. I get so much satisfaction, and I get a lot of drive from people around me. Like, look at how good they are. Look what they're doing. Like, I rise to the occasion. Right. So that keeps you on the ball, too, I yeah. think. Yeah. You yeah. know, if you get good people around you all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it comes, starts to feed you. Yeah, they feed you. They really do feed you. And working in a team, well, maybe not everybody, but I'm from a big family. So working without a team, I couldn't imagine how horrible that would be. Do you have natural energy? Where's this energy? Yes, I have natural energy. You have energy. natural, you wake up in the morning and you go. Yes, I do. I can't wait to get up. But I get that from my mother. When do you go to bed? Uh, I'm not as good as I should be. Because I don't sleep so well. I sleep like five hours, which is good for me. Because I went through a, a lot of years where I couldn't sleep more than two hours. But two I hours. function well. Really? A lot of people don't need a lot of sleep. Yeah. But I look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look better by sleeping more. That's really what I was after. I was thinking that this morning. I had to go to, you know, I come in from L.A. I have excuses. But it takes my face like another hour and a half to wake up after <laughs> I've woken up. Do you ever give yourself a mask, a, a astringent mask? No. Maybe try it. I'll oh, send yeah. you some. All right. I do have some. You do? Will you really use it? I don't want to waste it. I will use it. Okay, I'll send it to you. I'll use it. <laughs> you send me a picture of proof with the mask. I will, 100%. Okay, yeah, then I'm going to gonna believe go it. Stuff. I'm ready to go, but my face is like, Oh, no, I'm it ready. makes you feel so refreshed. It's great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll take it. Because you always had that. When you're over 40, you feel like you have an old face because you do. What makes you think I'm over 40? Because you look it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you have that white stuff coming out of your beard. <laughs> Yeah, the beard is new. I'm trying. I'm taking it out for a test drive. Really? Seriously? Yeah. Well, I don't like beards at all on You men. don't? No, but I like yours. Oh, interesting. You know why? Because... Because uh, there's none on top. I know what you're going to say. Because what? Because there's no hair on top. No. Like beard down here because there's no hair on top. You know, you, you offered that so quickly, you interrupted my thought. No, why do I like your beard? Because it's minimal. Uh -huh. I don't like a beard that, like extends a face and the neck. Yeah. And I like it when it looks just rough and sexy versus I got a beard. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. You hear that, guys? But keep this clipped down here. Yeah, he don't when like When men that let either. that go, it looks creepy. Yeah, it looks creepy. And the back back here, too. And people see you more from the side than they do see you from the Oh, uh, don't say that. It is Anytime true. people take pictures of me on stage, they're always from the side. Well, you don't want them looking at a scrappy Oof. edge here. Yeah, <laughs> it's you know? true. Do you ever work out? You never had to. Um, I work out three mornings a week for one hour flat. You do? I have since the day uh, I gave birth to my son when I was 46. I've been on it for a lot of years. Right. I hate it. You hate it. I don't like any day I work out. <laughs> I, I really don't. I <laughs> you think you'd get used to it after a while and go, hey, I know the benefit. Yeah. Let me enjoy it. But no, I do not. What's like your it. treat when, you, uh, when you've done something that you're proud of and you get to eat or drink something. Oh, I eat and drink whatever I want because I lose weight so easily. Yeah. I have to really keep on the weight. Really? Yeah. You have to work to keep on the weight. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like a gift. You might think so. Yeah. But what would you rather look like when you're getting older? Too fat or too thin? I say too fat. 
Wow, too thin. No, you know why? If you're thin, especially being a woman, you're too thin, you look drawn. And I've had, when I've dropped 10 pounds easily, not meaning to, my friends friends have said, is she well? People think you're not well. Right. So yeah, I'd rather be fat and healthy. Yeah, but I don't think there's that many fat and healthies. There's not a lot of fats that are uh, around. A real fat. No, I'm just talking about pleasantly chump, Pleasant, chubby. Yeah. That's nice. Right. Versus unpleasantly thin. Right. I don't know. I like thin. Thin looks good in clothes. Uh, you might thin say can wear, so. like a nice suit. Well, for that, you buy yourself a hanger and hang it on a hanger. <laughs> Get the same effect. But uh, no, thin doesn't look good in clothes. I even thought <laughs> lately, uh, I'm aware when I buy something, does it have a little, well, this doesn't. How did I buy this you by mistake? Sharp. Well, I usually like to have a little pad. Uh-huh. It makes my, you know, shoulders go a little bigger. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I like thin. You only like thin because you're you're probably concerned about putting on weight. Right. But if you were thin like me and looking mm-hmm. emaciated at times, you wish you were chubby. So what is the, what is, is there a treat that you like? What's like your favorite food? I could eat guacamole probably two quarts of it in one sitting, but I get very sick in my stomach. I with hummus chips? with lime chips. Lime chips, oh. Perfect combination. I like that. I like hummus that. is another one with carrots. Mm-hmm. I get, I eat so much I get sick. Yeah. Literally sick. I have that backstage at my shows. Hummus. What, with, hummus? Hummus. With What's your egg. breath like? Uh, awful. Awful. <laughs> but I'm on the road, so but I, I'm not you know, allowed to be near people. It's dangerous. You're pretty close to me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that. I might think about I it. I thought about that last yeah. night. That's why I didn't have uh, garlic. Really? Seriously? Yeah. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. You smell lovely to me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that uh, I hope that we get to meet again and I can bring you some bread. Will you eat the bread? You better bring me that goddamn bread you promised me. <laughs> <laughs> you gave me the croissant, but you said you'd bring me the bread. So don't say if I could bring you the bread. Well, I, I, this, it, you have to allow me into your life. To bring me the bread? Mm-hmm. Why don't you just mail it to me? I don't need to see you again. Well, then you're not getting the bread. Is this a seduction call? <laughs> call it what you will. It's a seduction call. I can't you believe at my age somebody's seducing me. You Keep it coming. <laughs> Keep it coming. <laughs> I haven't heard these words in a while. <laughs> All right, so I have to go to Ridgewood, Queens to get my next apartment. I don't want to go No, to you're not going to live there. I yeah. thought you were asking about areas to invest in. I can invest out there, okay. Yeah, first find yourself an apartment because it might cost you more than you think. Okay. Save your investment for your second step. I'm in L.A. I've got this house in L.A. I've got Where kids. in L.A.? Because I kind of know L.A. I work out there. Um, in the Hollywood Hills. Yeah, sure. It's a nice area. And uh, You're going to miss the weather. Yeah, I know. You really will. You don't think as much as you will. I know. In the dead of winter. <laughs> if we end up having to come back, is it the kind of is it smart to just rent a place here that you go come to a couple of months out of the year? Sure, you should. Rent it small. You don't have to own them both, right? No. Rent something as small and cheap as you could get it that has a little charm, like a little walk up mm-hmm. in one of these blocks. You'd love it. You'd be living a romantic life again. Yeah. You have a if you have a house in LA, you don't have to impress anybody. You're impressive by saying, I got a tiny little pen in LA in New York. Yeah. And you would be happy. Is your wife particular? Is she what? Particular? No. Oh. She's a Jersey kid. Oh, say so get her on the page with you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if she's a Saddlebrook Jersey kid. She's uh, Park Ridge. Park Ridge, even worse. She's fancy. No, that's not fancy. You sure? Yeah. Park Ridge, I think, is pretty nice. They're rough and tumble. Oh, are they really? Yeah. Okay, so she's not fancy. Yeah, she's not. The only hard part is going to be getting the apartment and not telling her I have the apartment. No way you wouldn't. (laughs) I'm going to call and tell her. You wouldn't dare. Secret to unhappiness in marriage. Don't you dare. No. But do rent something short term and see how you like it. Don't sell your house in LA. Yeah. No. No. Keep it. Of course. Just for short term. Big deal. What's yeah. a year or two? Yeah. All right. I'll keep it. You probably won't live that long. I could get that feeling looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. You look healthy enough. But if I brought my tarot cards, I could read your tarot cards and told you when you're going to die. Do you read cards? Yes, I do. You pretty do? well. Yeah. Oh. All right. Maybe we shouldn't Break. hang out. Why? You don't like cards? I don't like to know that stuff. You don't like to know the good stuff? Is there good? What, yeah. to, what to be afraid of? Mm. What to be cautious about? Yeah. Who might come into your life? Right. 
when your wife is going to leave you. Right. How much money your daughter is going to ask you for. Uh, yeah. You have all these answers? I have them all. You do? I Do I? These are my cards? Why did you bring these? Why did I bring them? Yeah. I don't know. They're always fun. <laughs> do you want me to read your cards? <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> Let me move it's the bottle It's a little weird that they just appeared. Yeah, they. It, it's even weirder to me. We're Someone who doesn't believe in destiny. <laughs> no. What, did you plan this? Did you ask him about this already? No. Oh, okay. You got me going. All right. This is All right, you have to ask me a question. You can't just be tell me about my life. You have to ask me a question. Like, give me a topic. A topic? And then shuffle the cards so the cards feel, the, feel your spirit in them. Ooh. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing this? Uh, since I was 23. Really? Yeah. Oh, boy. It's just a sport, that's all. It's a lot of fun for teenagers, especially. Okay, what's yeah. your question? Um, what's my question? It could be a general question, but it shouldn't be just be my life. Right. Okay. Um, it's too broad. Um, like your cat. Tell me about my cat. Tell me about my cat? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about my kids. Oh, your kids. Okay. Here's the past of your children. Mm. Boy's a dreamer. I don't know if you have, have a boy. I have two girls. Well, this sounds like a boy. Do you have one lesbian? Um, to be determined. Okay. You know these kids she's nowadays. She's lesbian, yeah. She's lesbian. They're all doing everything. Let her know she's lesbian. All right. Which is no problem because she is a wonderful, wonderful spirit. Wonderful lesbian. A wonderful lesbian. You are definitely moving the death card. Currently right on top, without a doubt. What does that mean? It means a change. Uh, usually a geographical change, you're going to be moving. You're getting on your horse and you're leaving behind. Now, I am or would, they are? You are. I am. This would imply to me, I'm jumping ahead, I really shouldn't, but this Go would ahead. imply to me right away Yeah. Uh, that you are definitely selling your L.A. house. You're not going to keep it. You're going to leave everything behind. Really? That's interesting. I didn't get that impression from you speaking. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay. Oh, you work so hard for your money. You still do. I like do. a young man. Yeah, you haven't let up at all. No. Let me not jump forward. Let me go to the... Oh, wait. I'm reading your cards. Hold it. What? You said Who my kids. You said, tell me about your kids. Yeah. Oh, forget it. So this has nothing to do with your me. Your kid is moving. Oh, yeah. Oh, your kid God. works hard. Uh, yeah. Your lesbian daughter right? is a dreamer. Yes. Okay. This is all making Here sense. Here we go. Uh, I'm so glad I don't have to move. All right. Also, the same girl worries a lot. She's a worrier. Hmm. I wonder which one. I don't know. They don't tell me which one. They don't have names on them. Yeah. Okay. And again, a worrier in the evenings as well. Mm, well, she yeah, overthinks, one, overthinks whoever this girl is. The problem is the one who really worries a lot, really likes dudes. But maybe, well, maybe she, she worries and doesn't tell me. Well, I don't know. That looks like we're, <laughs> a, a girl dressing like a lesbian. Yeah. Or a guy, right? Okay, whatever. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, hardworking kids. Hardworking. Yeah, yeah, they are both. They both are. Well, I don't know which one. Yeah. You should, really should have asked me about one. It would have been less. But it's too late now. You uh, said my kids, okay? Oh, jeez. All right. You Look at how hard work. Uh, no, I don't want to. <laughs> Consistently hard worker, just like the picture shows. Mm -hmm. Not erratic in any way, which is lovely right. in a child. Gives, it gives you less worry. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of your children is definitely departing. I don't know where they're gone, but they're gonna leave everything behind and go somewhere else. Well, one's graduating. Oh, that would be that would qualify. And these are all the beginnings for again, it's difficult with both child, so I'll say one. One of your children you can narrow it down. I don't want to because I already start out as the children. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it could be either one. Now I'm confused. <gasps> now I'm more oh nervous my than God. when I started. Okay. Well, anyway, one of the children has yeah. a lot of opportunity. Okay. They're going to have opportunity around them all the time. It's just in nature. They're not going to have to look for anything. Things are going to appear for them that they could grab this or grab that or grab that. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just going to be surrounded by opportunity their whole life. Ah, uh, this is a divorce. Divorce. Mm -hmm. Smack in the middle of the middle years, like 30 something. Really? Yeah. A divorce, a heartbreaker. Oh boy. I never Change liked your place. that place. You even know which guy he is? Uh, is she going to marry him? I don't think so. Oh. I don't think we've met him yet, but I don't like him. <laughs> Wait, you, you don't like someone you never met? Yeah. You're nutso. <laughs> uh, okay, ooh. One of your children is going to marry a really rich man. Well, that's good. Big provider, but an older guy, like 10 years After older. the divorce? I don't know if it's the same one. Oh. And here it is again. 
It's a divorce again. It, it Another jo- divorce. No, no, it doesn't. It's the same divorce, but oh, same one. I don't know if it's a. You know, I don't know when it's going to happen, but. In older years, wait, maybe recurring marriages, maybe it could be another know, divorce because it happens much later, right? In the middle years, the later years. Get divorced, marry Actually, it's going to be you money. divorcing your wife. Now uh, you're hitting I'm on me. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is exciting. We're going to have bread in my little apartment that no one knows about. As long as your wife's not home. That's right. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Well, the card said. Okay, see I'll just here. Blame it on the cards. This is your dreamer here, recurring as an older person. Mm-hmm. Whoever that, I'm thinking it's right. your daughter. We don't really know. Mm-hmm. But dreaming, but working hard. Right. You have a lot of money in your kids. That's good. They're going to provide for themselves easily. None for of them are coming home. It's yep. not going to come. It doesn't say well, dad's Well, no, this one it. rich guy. No, you don't appear. Not, it's not a single mother or father card here, oh. which is unusual. Usually that shows up. That's great. As a queen or a king. Okay. There's hope. And again, this is starting another career later in life. This is your son for sure. I don't have a son. Well, then it's your lesbian again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> She's very busy. <laughs> Wait, am I going to get hate mail from the, the gay community? No. Yeah, all right. No, good. you didn't say anything bad. Okay, no, because I love lesbians. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm a lesbian, so yeah. why would I mind them? All right. <laughs> Whoever this guy. <laughs> whoever this child is uh-huh. very generous a lot of money makes a lot of money is right. a dreamer and is giving away a lot of money wow. in our older years his older years her, ah the uh, mother finally shows uh, up your wife oh okay? and she has a black cat oh she does really I yeah. didn't even notice the black cat no but she is definitely the queen of beginnings again and you notice in all the readings here mm-hmm. the beginnings showed up again and again the opportunity you know right. So she's the queen of opportunity. So wait, what does my wife have to your do? Your mother has, your wife is a good luck charm. She's a good begin, luck charm. To begin with, yep. She mm. she breeds opportunity around her. She might not take it herself, but it's in her her genre or in her field, so she gets Ooh. all this opportunity, and she's not giving any of it to you, I see. Oh, no, I'm geez. only kidding, I'm only kidding. Maybe I should tell her about the apartment. And this is a departure again, leaving your home. Who's leaving now? I don't know, whatever kid that is. They leave a lot and they come back a lot. lot and. You would have begged them tonight never to leave you. Obviously, they want to go somewhere, and you don't want them to go. I don't. <laughs> or do I? Well, if they're marrying a rich guy, then it's okay. Yeah, they're, they're making a good living. Stay yeah. close to these kids. Yeah. They could provide for you. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. How do you know? I could feel it from you. <laughs> you can? That mm. I work too hard? Yeah. Mm. Because you love you. Because my face isn't waking up yet. No, not at all. No, because you look like you really work your ass off at what you do. But I do, but I like it. That's why you work your ass off. You yeah. love it. You don't like it. You love it. Right. Maybe 99, 95% of it you love. It's got to be 5% it? that you don't, that I love. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'd be retired. Everybody says, when you're going to retire, I'm, gonna say, I'm afraid I'd be unhappy. I don't think so. Yeah. What would yeah. you do? Get in people's way. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It's not good. You no, have to, it's you not have good. to be fully involved, I think, in whatever you do to be happy. You know. Yeah, I know. When people, because I have friends, and now are starting to think about retire? when they're going to retire. But what I don't are they even gonna think about it. Themselves with, yeah. I don't even think about it. It's not even yeah. an option. It's not in the cards. Ah, the cards. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. You pull one card just for you, not your kids. Okay. Which one do you want? Not that one. Ah. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Ace of Cups. There's two best cards in the deck. Ace of Cups is one of them. Oh, yeah? Anything you want, have total fulfillment from. Really? Not empty fulfillment, but totally fulfilled. You're going to be the kind of guy that's going to die and say, don't mourn for me. Really? Very much so. Apartment. Beach house. <laughs> you and me and Brett. You're rich kids. <laughs> rich kids. <laughs> <laughs> There you this go. was really great. I knew I was going to enjoy Who this. Who brought these cards? Oh, good job. London. Yeah. Thank you. That's a good team. Wow, they think of everything. Yeah, that was um, that was amazing. Well, Thank you, you so what much. Else you brought. This was really great. Anything yeah. you want to know from me? I was nervous in the first twenty minutes, and you made me feel comfortable. Thanks. You, you're the best. Yeah, <laughs> you are. Really great to meet best. you. Same here. We'll are you really sometime. sending me the bread? Because I'm really sending you the the mask. All right, I'll do, it'll be a fair trade. I'll send you the bread. Can I trust you? Yes, you can. Okay, good. I brought my bread to uh, Gilda's Club. You know the Gilda's yes, Club? Yes, of course. I hosted for them, and they nice. brought, asked me to bring some bread. 
Grand Rapids, Michigan. You're kidding. Yeah, and they auctioned it off. For what did they get for it? Two grand. No kidding. Yeah, for a loaf of bread. Wow. I'm it's happy you bread. told me that. Good bread. Send me the same bread. I want to brag to everybody. I know a guy who paid 2000 for this. <laughs> this is a $2,000 loaf of bread. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. Thank you so much.